Hey guys, you got Crave here with a quick review of Razer's Leviathan V2. So I've been meaning to get a replacement for my Z625, which is a very good 2.1 setup. The sound quality is great for what it offers, but I needed something that number one, looked better, and number two, affords a smaller footprint on my desk. As you can see, the satellite speakers of the 625 take up some space, so the small soundbar gives me more on the left and right side. Now, I could have gone for the Katana, but somehow someone would always beat me to it whenever it was in stock. And the original Leviathan was always, well, it was good, but it was a bit dated, so I ended up with the V2. In terms of its looks, it's a good thing that it kept, or at least the V2 kept, the more subtle look of the first Leviathan. I'm glad there's none of the Razer's loud green color, which isn't a bad thing, but I do prefer the muted gray silver color of their logo. Overall, it looks very simple. It has a somewhat boxy look with rounded corners. It's small with a side-to-side -side length of about 19.5 inches and a height of about 3.5 inches depending on the feet you choose to pair it with. On that, yes, it does come with optional feet that slightly tilts the front-facing part of the bar upward. It also comes with two different power cords, which are either the two-prong or three-prong format. It also comes with its own power brick and a well-braided USB-A to USB-C cable. In terms of features, it's okay, but I can understand if people find it lacking in one aspect. The most notable feature are the THX Spatial Audio, the Bluetooth 5.2 format, and of course the RGB flavor. The thing is that I had hoped for more options. If we're really moving away from the 3.5 jack, an option for optical cables would have been great. It's not a big deal, but of course it makes me think of things. If ever I wanted to hook it up to a smaller TV, maybe in the 40 something inch range for casual watching or maybe pairing it with a console, I really don't understand this lack of option. Again though, it doesn't bother me as much as any speaker on my PC never really moves, but flexibility is always a good thing. In terms of aesthetics, we covered some parts earlier, but let's check out some of the things that really stand out. It comes with a subwoofer for the rumble effect, and I like the simple design again with the muted Razer logo. It has a non-removable cable that connects to the soundbar. The cable's end will remind you of the female sockets for the pins that juice up your video card and the lighting in your PC. Now, for the soundbar itself, the front part design is subtle, the way it's made up. It has a mesh grille that covers the whole front end with the Razer logo in the middle and the symbol for the THX uh, spatial audio on the right side if you're looking at it. The top part has a number of buttons which allow, but basically allow you to switch up the source, uh, enable Bluetooth, power up and down the device, and the volume buttons which also control the volume setting in Windows. I like the tactile feedback when you press each one. The part hidden from view or the backside contains the porch which are for your subwoofer, the USB-C end of your USB cable, and the power socket. And again, this really just reminds me of, you know, the additional source port which would have been better. Now, the underside has the RGB strip and the feet which is a two less affair as the replacement and original feet really just easily slides in and out. So overall, the bar looks good, and if you need to configure the EQ settings or the lighting effects, there is a dependency on Synapse to change up the settings. As a practically PC and Bluetooth-only sound device, Synapse is pretty good, as you have the options to switch to stereo or spatial, allows you to adjust the sound settings to your preference, and a few other things. Now, you can also download some apps uh, into your phone to adjust the settings via Bluetooth, so it's nice. As I said, it's always great to have options. Of course, the main thing about getting any kind of speaker is the quality of the sound. Now, this isn't something audiophiles will appreciate. My friend who's in music and in photography will not even look at devices that are targeted at gamers, so I didn't bother getting his opinion. To that end, the Leviathan isn't bad. The different sounds from musical tracks are pretty clear to me to an untrained ear and it didn't give me the impression that it sounded cheap. There is no rattle at somewhat higher volumes. Now I didn't try to max it out as generally I never or have never set any speaker I've used to max level. The speakers, any speaker I've ever owned is normally just right in front of me so there's no real point in doing that. Also. You have to set things if you want the lower end or the bass effect. It was initially a bit surprising as I've owned some Razer audio equipment like two different hammerheads and some cans and their signature has always been on the bassy side. It's weird that the out of the box experience is a bit more neutral. In terms of the spatial audio feature, 
Really, I don't know. It wasn't anything special. I mean, when playing games like COD, I kind of get the idea where the enemy footsteps are coming from, or maybe a game like Apex where they could be above you, but it's not like using my Kraken Tournament Edition or other over-the-air setups which allow for more accurate telling of where the sound sources are coming from. The left and right audio channels work great though, so there's no problem in that aspect. So if you're really after accurate positioning, get a really good 5.1 setup or a proper 5.1 setup or use headphones that offer the best kind of sound spatial support. So there you have it, my take on the Leviathan V2. For what it offers and how it matches my small table setup, I'm very happy with it. I wish Razer had put in more though, like additional support for other uh, sound sources, but other than that, the soundbar offers excellent gaming audio that doesn't take up too much space. It's not for the extremely competitive, but it doesn't pull you down in the KD ratio tables, nor does it make it difficult to appreciate the overall ambiance of games like RPGs, Sims, and the like. Thanks for watching, guys. Talk to you soon.